There's a, an expression that I've come across. Every loving is a dying. Every loving is a dying. And one of the things that I, I realize about each and every one of us is that we are, are shaped and formed by many, many outside factors. Um, we can be fooled into thinking that uh, the choices that we make, and to some degree they do, make us be the people we are. We have a lot of influence on, good influences on us that we hardly ever think about. And when I think about somebody like Father Claire, I think about how being a religious and being a priest influenced him to be a certain kind of person. There's a, a little piece here I'm going to read from C.S. Lewis that comes from his book, The Four Laws. And here he's talking about agape. The kind of love that is given without expecting anything in return. He says, to love at all is to be vulnerable. Every loving is a dying. Love anything and your heart will certainly be wrong and possibly be broken. If you want to make sure of keeping it intact, you must give your heart to no one, not even to an animal. Wrap it carefully round with hobbies and little luxuries. Avoid all entanglements. Lock it up safe in the casket or coffin of your selfishness. But in that space, safe, dark, motionless, airless, it will change. It will not be broken. It will become unbreakable, impenetrable, irredeemable. Every loving is a dying. This happened at the beginning of Claire's life in his baptism. Are you not aware that when you died in Christ, you also rise to new life with Him? Through His baptism, Claire began a long journey of living the Paschal Mystery, of dying to Himself so that Christ would rise within Him. So that gradually through His life, He could be like St. Paul and say, it is no longer I, but it is Christ who lives within me. When he was a young boy, he was confirmed. Another step in his sacramental journey where he became more closely conformed to Christ with the grace of the Holy Spirit. He celebrated the Eucharist as a priest day after day after day. Day after day after day he was at the table of the Lord, breaking this bread and sharing this cup as a sign of Jesus' body broken for us and his blood poured out for us. To remind us that every act of service, every act of sacrifice is an imitation of Jesus who gave of himself so that we would have life. This influence has shaped him to be the person that he was. I know from conversations with Claire that he frequently celebrated the sacrament of reconciliation. Again, another act where he was trying to die to the things that kept him from being like Christ so that he could more closely conform himself to Christ. In his ordination, acting as a, as a priest, he knew that the way that he dealt with people on a very human level 
was going to be a clearer sign of Christ for people. He knew that he represented the church. He knew that he represented Christ. And in his everyday actions, in his attitudes, and in his words and thoughts, he knew that the way he presented himself would have an effect on people so that they would be able to see Christ more clearly. As he aged and ended up in a very, very difficult situation in terms of his health, he was anointed many times. And through his anointing, he realized that he was conforming his sufferings to Christ. So that again, people could see Christ in him and the faith that he continued to have in the midst of his sickness and his suffering. He continued to give witness to the presence of God in his life. We heard last night from Father Joseph about Claire's commitment as a religious and how the vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience shaped him to be the person that he was. He was steeped in priesthood and religious life. And all these influences shaped and formed him to be Christ for his family, for his community, for the many people for whom and with whom he ministered. 